this paper <coughs> is um, about all the current state of the art techniques that we have in attribution modeling and uh, how should the research be going forward so what are the areas that need more uh, in research or work that needs to be done for attribution modeling it's written by um, Kannan, uh, Werner and Peter so Kannan is one of the very famous authors in attribution modeling um, and uh, it was written in 2016 at that point in time it was state of the art so now I don't know exactly okay so <coughs> um, so you guys understand attribution modeling right Attrib so there is a lot of different channels using which we do advertising and marketing right uh, so whenever a conversion happens how do we attribute that conversion to the different channels so which of those channels work or how many of those channels work rather and what percentage of the conversion uh, should be at attributed to those channels that is the problem at hand here um, so there are um, you know like different things that come into play here uh, carryover effect spillover effects you know these are all important things that needs to be considered while we make this model carryover effect uh, okay, let's say uh, somebody has so there's a new product that's being launched and they made an advertisement on TV. Okay. Some people see the advertisement and then they go and search on the website and then they, you know, uh, think through to see if it will be useful to them or not. And then if it is useful, if they think it will be useful to them, they might go ahead and buy it. Okay. So they are risk takers. Okay. At the first time without any reviews or, you know, nothing just by getting introduced to a new thing they want to try it out okay uh, then there are new you know uh, segment sorry another segment where they see the ad yeah then they will do some research then they'll let the matter be on the burner then they'll do other stuff then again after some time probably a month or so if they get again introduced uh, by another channel or via the same ad they you know tend to remember it and then they then go back and check for reviews and see if it is still good or not then they'll buy it okay um i fall into that category so i you know without reviews i don't buy anything so <laughs> like there are uh, people who just you know see ads read reviews but never make a decision to buy unless it is really 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 needed for them okay that is another category so we have this effect where one uh, channel introduces the product to them then there is another channel that again reminds it of them then there is another channel you know that again triggers them to buy or it could be the same channel but you know over time there are lots of possibilities so that is the carryover effect you know like if it is the same channel it's the carryover effect um, and if it is a different channel it's a spillover effect so that effect has to be attributed to the previous channel also so from channel a to channel b if it if it spills over then some attribution should go to channel a also because uh, from there only it came to b and then it got converted right so that is the carryover and, uh, and the spillover effects so um the idea of attributing the effectiveness of the conversion to each and every touch point is the main concept of this okay. so there are different models i won't go uh, very deep into the models i'll just tell you what are the different models and just a basic you know, explanation of what it is then we'll uh, go to the next section okay because this is a very big section and if you go in it becomes all algorithms and stuff um so there is this uh, shapely model okay that is one of the important models you know that was used by Alessandro and Perlick at uh, uh, 2012. So Shapely model is a uh, game theory concept actually. Um, so uh, it is calculated by computing the average of the difference of all the combinations I would say. So okay, let's say like, there are different people or different actors who are working in coalition to get a um, end result on a game right. So then once the game is won, how do you fairly distribute the gains and the cost to these actors in coalition? 
that is how this concept came into being in actually in game theory and we use that for attribution here in marketing yeah i think the, the similarity is that in the game also each player makes an un, unequal contribution to the team right and uh, yeah. similarly here each marketing channel makes an unequal contribution to the conversion so uh, that there is that parallel that you have which enables you to apply that concept over here yeah thanks sai um so so that is one of the models that is being used then the other one is actually from lee and kanan uh, so this is um a framework it's more like a, a conceptual framework um uh, and the the problem they are tackling here is um or the the context they are taking into account here is that they consider the different online channels that are available and then the Uh, so how a person chooses these combination of channels then from that so the visits through those channels and then the subsequent purchase so these three different stages are considered okay. uh, and uh, it's actually a, a a model where the working is shown so they build the model they show the working this paper is a really nice paper i've been i've been going through that it's here uh, probably next time we'll discuss it so here you see uh, so this triple s r so s is basically search and r is uh, i think it is referral yeah it's here so these are the you know pr- uh, uh, prior touch points then the final touch point is actually a direct uh, you know visit and from there you have the conversion so th- so they take into account these uh, previous things and how you can attribute to them so that is the model there so then you have this uh, new technique where you 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 propose a multivariate point process where each customer touch is viewed as a outcome of a univariate uh, a poisson process this is more uh, mathematical i don't i have not seen many approaches of this type being used for attribution uh, then you have the hidden markov model which is a very famous one so markov chains uh, are actually so markov models are actually markov chains where you have different states right so uh, from one node you can go to another node and you always so the probability of moving to a node you know depends on the immediate previous node alone so they call it you know um, like you have only one state of memory so that is the um default markov chain model um so from one channel so what are the chances that you have a impression on another channel right so fr- from here where can you move to so that kind of modeling is done with the markov chains or markov models um so then there's also this higher order markov works so so higher order markov chains are mostly in use in nlp in uh, text prediction uh, so you know when you start typing what will be the next word you know that kind of a prediction comes through right so that is and also in translating you know this is where higher order markov chains are mostly used so once i explain how that works it will be really uh, you know um, it will really start to make sense so there's this so by the def- uh, in the default markov chains i said only one prior state is being considered right in higher order ma- uh, markov chains you can build more memory you can consider prior 2 3 4 x number of states okay and that is why it's being uh, specifically used in text prediction so let's say i i type a word the okay so that so if it's a default markov chain only the will be considered and we have to predict the next word then the next word could be duck like the duck the end the grain the tight the wall anything right now i'll add two words against the against the duck won't be meaningful against the end no against the grain against the tide against the wall will make sense right so then the third word is added Sw- swim against the then it's only one next word of these five right Sw- swim against the tide so that's how the hidden order marco sorry a uh, higher order marco chain models are being used so you can use that in attribution also uh, to you know make those paths 
um so after that we have um yeah so this this uh, one paper by ju wilbur and zu where they uh, established a spillover linkage between the offline and the online uh, uh search offline behavior and offline uh, purchases versus online search but this is this offline versus online thing has always been a very a uh, difficult spot for attribution because it's very hard to link those two here they only do an association so whenever these offline ads are being done right so how does they affect the online search behavior so that's what they have done they really not solve the offline versus online integration uh, problem on this paper so these are the different models or different algorithms that they use for for attribution currently right uh, so this is a very interesting section going forward okay so there's this so we have lots of ad blockers right in in uh, browser as well as mo- uh, uh, mobile so that really brings the question you know so is this ad actually viewed by the participant or or the the person or is it being blocked by a uh, blocker and it's it shows to us like it's been viewed so is so is the data really uh, true okay that is the question that it brings up and there are cookie deletions you know the option to delete the cookies so that also distorts the data you know uh, uh, that we capture for the path of the customer right so these are points that we have to overcome or find a way to come round about to solve these issues so there's one a paper from goes and todri where they use a technological solution to register the actual viewability so basically if it has been actually viewed or not or is the ad blocker blocking it right? as well as a measure of the duration of the exposure to display ads so you know with these two they make this data more more realistic or more true rather than you know uh, not so right um so that is one part that you know uh, uh, that Uh, they say needs more research on ad blockers and cookie deletion um then we have um this cross device yeah this is also another important aspect so you have mobiles laptops right so uh, and a lot of other devices tablets uh, smart watches uh, vr headsets right so people generally tend to search in more than one device um and so we as marketers we need to capture all that information for us to make sense okay um so like there are different ways to match these things so you have probabilistic matching you have deterministic matching deterministic matching is using the google id or facebook id on you know that is logged into these devices and and using that you can track uh, that is more accurate but the problem is the the user has to be logged into all of those you know which is not always realistic uh then there is probabilistic matching so um so these are matched you think uh, using probabilistic uh, methods but they are not very accurate you know 60 to 70% of the times only they are accurate so that is the gap that we have in cross device uh, path capturing currently um uh, and one insight is that whenever a person switches from a mobile device to a non mobile device most likely laptops then there uh, there is a higher chance of purchase uh, they say it's more than double um um sorry it's almost the double okay um and they also say that these these different channels have different impact on different devices so you know that's based on the format of the content that is provided okay, let's say if it is email right so viewing an email on a desktop versus a phone is different and hence it has different impact on the person who is viewing it so that also needs to be considered is what they are saying for for research purposes going forward so yeah so this is the pain point that i said you know integrating online and offline path to purchase this has been always been a a, a very big pain point to get that data for integrating these two and this needs more work is what they are also saying uh so there are a few issues that we need to uh, really consider Uh, issues or concerns that we need to address while we do this modeling. 
so there are customer initiated touch points and there are firm initiated touch points okay so uh, so we have to take that into consideration while we do the attribution so if a customer is you know uh, are reaching out to the firm then the chances are higher and more and more attribution needs to be given to that specific um a uh, channel uh, versus how you know if a firm reaches out to a customer so that uh, would eliminate some bias that is you know present uh so that is one thing that needs to be considered then um yeah so in big data so using big data and uh, and real time analytics they say we can get more out of this attribution modeling uh so uh, uh, an example they have given is that you know uh, let's say Uh, a, a website visit okay is is given a specific attribution okay or a, or a weight okay so that weight needs to be broken down into different sub parts or that attribution needs to be broken down into different sub parts of the of the website in terms of its content in terms of its design in terms of the creative display of the ad you know so a lot of different factors are there using which you can break that attribution down so that you can get actionable insights so, so so which part of the website you have to improve or act upon in order to improve the overall attribution that you get for your website okay so that kind of information that kind of breakdown or, or detail needs to be uh, seen by the practitioner so they say that is something that needs more research on all right and uh, the final point is attribution to marketing mix modeling so the data output of the attribution model has to flow into the marketing mix model and there are always issues you know in this interface that's because attribution is done um, at the individual customer level data and marketing mix model is done at a channel level or the firm level right so there's also so this uh, uh, this is level mismatch then you have the time period mismatch so attribution is really done for a shorter time period versus marketing modeling is done for a longer time period typically you know but you can also do attribution for a longer time period but most of the data tends to be in smaller time frames right um uh um, so that is uh, an interface that needs more work and research is what they're saying and finally they have this you know broad level overview questions you take a step back and then you see so you know you have different touch points you're always talking about conversions which is like the immediate like instant gratification of those touch points right so so what about the long term view how does this touch point affect affect the customer uh, uh, loyalty how does it affect the brand equity how does it affect the customer lifetime value so so this is also an experience and how is it affecting all of those bigger things uh, you know that you would like to see about the customer you know that is a question that they have posed uh, and that is something that we can you know that needs to be worked on as what they see so this is in broad about the current techniques that we use for attribution modeling and where we should be going a direction for future, uh, future research for the attribution modeling So there's a very interesting paper that I'm reading, and probably we'll look at it on the next section. It's about attribution, uh, attributing conversions in a multi-channel online marketing environment. It's a empirical model and field experiment by Lee and Tanner. I think this is the most famous paper, right? That Lee and Tanner. Yeah. When it comes to attribution modeling, almost every other paper that you find on attribution modeling, they would have cited this paper. Yeah. really detail like there's lots of algorithms and all <laughs> all right 